Hi everybody, welcome back to Call of Duty Warzone and what we've got here is a complete solo victory walkthrough. We're going from drop to finish where I'm going to kind of talk about what I was thinking about as I was uh, playing to give you some hints and tips to maybe help you get your Warzone victories too. So, first things first, I always look at the map and what I'm trying to do is fly uh, by parachute as far away as I can from the flight path and preferably outside of the circle too. So what you see, see I'm doing there is I'm just kind of moving my cursor around seeing right what's the furthest place I can get to that's away from the flight path um, and uh, outside of the circle. Now I end up choosing one of the places that I go to an awful lot. Now this is just left of dam. Now the idea of choosing this place is that it's not actually that far from the flight path but as you can see it's quite far from the circle and it's near the end of the flight path and it's not a named place so generally where people like to go <laughs> is they you know they like to go to named places that are on the flight path that are early on the flight path and are inside the circle you know so every time you cross out one of those there's going to be less and less people actually kind of going to these uh, going to these places um, um, the reason why I do this and don't dive in is because my whole uh, strategy for um, Warzone and any Battle Royale is the idea that nothing, the only thing that matters is getting to the top 10. Alright, that's what you want to be trying to do. Now, as you'll see there is where I wanted to go, another guy dropped there, so I ignore him and I carry on flying to go to the next building that I know about. Um... So all I want to do is I want to try and survive until the top 10. Nothing else matters. Getting kills doesn't matter one bit, you know. Um, I mean, in Warzone, you want to get a, as, as much money as you can. You want to get some certain things, which I'll talk about in a, in a bit. But it doesn't matter if you get five kills, if you drop pot and kill people, if you don't get yourself to the top 10. Because the way I think about it is that if you can get to the top 10, you've then got... A good chance of winning a war zone or any battle royale if you can do that consistently enough you know you're not going to win every time you get to the top 10 but let's say you can get to the top 10 10 times you'll then the chances of you having one one of those top 10s will be will be very high um, generally when I was working this out for PUBG if you treat it as when you get to the top 10 then it's random who wins because you've got the randomness of the circle and the weapons and tactics and things like that. And now I know skill does skew this, but if it was random, um, I think from the from the maths, it's if you got to the top ten seven times, then you've got an over a fifty percent chance of having one one of those top tens. But ignore the maths, ignore the probability side of it, just think about getting to the top ten. The other reason why you want to avoid uh, early gunfights and loot up quietly is because the early game is the time when there is the most strain on the game engine, on the game server. You know, it's got 150 people to try and look after. Um, and the chances of things like packet loss and lag and basically your bullets not registering their hits are much 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 higher so that's why often the game can often be a little bit laggy to start off with when you first drop in and then as more and more people die as more and more people come off the server the server can run better it can run more efficiently and it can keep an eye on those bullets a lot better so you know that's another reason to why you should avoid the um, avoid those early gunfights. Now, a big argument that people will often use about getting into early gunfights um, regularly, you know, and dropping heart, is that they'll say, well, that's the only way you can get better at gunfights, by getting into them an awful lot. Now, I would say, no, 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 no. <laughs> the beauty with Warzone is that you don't have to. You can play Plunder, and that, you know, you're on the same map then, and you can run around with the same weapons and you can practice getting into trouble and getting into gunfights as much as you like. Also, you can just, if you've bought the full game, bought the full version of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019, you can play regular multiplayer, you can play Domination, Free For All, Team Deathmatch, Halfpoint, all that sort of stuff, and get used to it. And you can even 
set up bot battles where you can set the health of the bots to 250 so you're kind of simulating players with with uh, full armor and you can uh, run around practicing with exactly the weapon setup that you will uh, have um, when you come into uh, in come into warzone so that ne uh, necessity to practice gunfights by dropping in hot doesn't you know doesn't as far as i'm concerned count in warzone all ki all that counts especially well like in all the game modes whether it be solos trios quads or when we get duos is trying to get you to the top 10 or if you're playing a team version of it trying to get all of your team members to the top 10. Um, now this style can often be um, a little bit boring because you're deliberately avoiding confrontation um, and so you know often there'll be l this big long lull in the game but another really cool thing about Warzone is that there's there's a few more things that you can do even if you're not getting involved in gunfights. You know, there's looting up, obviously. There's collecting money. There's doing contracts. So I, I don't think you should go after the, the actual contract ones where you have to kill people. But you can go after the the plunder ones, you know, where you go searching for the boxes. Or you can go after the, the zone ones where you're looking for, um, you know, you defend a point. And that will give you some cash and give you some goodies as well. Now, what am I doing with looting? So, basically with looting, I'm just trying to get as much money as I can. Um, and I'm also looking for... I really want to have some silenced weapons. Um, in uh, Warzone, as in Call of Duty, we've got the minimap in the top left-hand corner. And if you fire an unsilenced gun, um, you'll appear on, on that minimap. Um, and what you'll find, and this especially applies to solo, is, is that as soon as you fire an unsilenced gun, people look at the minimap and they all turn around to look towards you. And quite a lot of people will start running towards you because what they're looking for is for two people to start shooting each other. And generally, what happens is one of them will win, one of them will die. But even the guy who's won will probably have lost some of his armor and will need to reload. So if they can get there quick enough, they can then take advantage of that to win. So the more you can stay off that um, minimap, the better. Now, as far as getting money together and getting a custom loadout drop in, what I'm kind of thinking about is uh, my priorities are uh, to get to get money, obviously, by running and, and looting up and things like that. But my first priority is to get a self revive kit. Although they're not that brilliant in solos, because the chances of you getting sniped for a long way and then being able to recover aren't that high but I have won uh, games due to having a self revive so I always want to get a self revive first um, and I want to get a gas mask now I know you can pick up gas masks from um, supply drops and, and dead people but I always think you should if you've got a self revive in your pocket and you've got a gas mask in your pocket you've got two things that can win you a game and most of the time, I don't bother buying a supply drop box, you know, a custom loadout box, because so many of them drop into the map. Um, you, don't, you don't need to waste that. I think they're $10,000 at the moment. And in solos, you know, it, it can be quite difficult to get that amount of money, especially if you're playing a uh, strategy like this, where it's all about avoiding getting into fights, avoiding killing people early along, playing the quiet side of the circle, creeping in. Um, but anyway, so you'll see in a few minutes what happens is I do find a supply drop and I manage to get my loadout. Um, so let's take a step backwards and talk again about practicing. So one of the things I believe in, if you want to win uh, Warzone, um, you need to be able to practice with the gun that you're going to play with the most in the game. And so my favourite gun at the moment for Warzone is a uh, silenced MP7. And so I have a custom uh, loadout for that set up in the multiplayer and in, and in Warzone which consists of the MP7 um, it's, it's got like the monolithic suppressor on it, it's got the commando foregrip, it's got the 60 round mag it's got the GI um, reflex sight and the stipple rubber grip Okay, so it's it snaps down sight pretty fast, it's got loads of bullets for spraying people down um, and it keeps me off the radar. And my secondary is an RPG and then uh, my perks are cold-blooded, so that people can't see me through thermal scopes, um, and ghost, so I don't appear on the radar when people put UAVs up, and I don't appear on heartbeat sensors. And then amped is my final perk, um, which enables me to swap between my MP7 and my rocket launcher really quick. 
And then what I do is prior to playing a series of games in Warzone, um, I set up private matches against bots because I've got the, you know the full version of the multiplayer, and I have exactly that setup. And I put the bots up to 250 health, um, and I tend to play on Euphrates Bridge, and I just run around with 11 basic bots, and I just go around trying to headshot them. Um, with my MP7 all the time, just to get snappy and get really used to the way that not only the gun moves and the gun named outside, but also the way your character moves. Because with each level of weapon, different type of weapon, and depending on which attachment you have on it, your movement is adjusted as well. So this is where I found that supply drop. I've got to try and figure out how to how to get it because it's kind of up there. Remember, supply drops always attract people, as you'll see in a second. But I managed to get it. Um, pick up my MP7. Sometimes in a game, I'll change the rocket launcher to... So I blow up this guy's quad. He's to my left. I may have damaged him a little bit here as well. Because I can hear him to my left. So he may be doing something. However, what I do know is that the gas is coming in. So I do have to make a move. So I make the decision that um, it's probably best to retreat. I go right. Um, and then I'm just sprinting away, just trying to put some cover between me. Now I see him, so I'm just going to tickle him a little bit with the MP7. And you can see the MP7, we're, that's pretty long range for the MP7. But I break his armour. Um, he's he's not dead, but you know he's going to be slowing down. Uh, he, if he runs into anybody else and he haven't, hasn't replaced his armour, he's going to be in a bit of trouble. Um, Unfortunately, I think I've only got one rocket in my RPG, which isn't very good. So what I'm starting to think about now is I probably need to find a buy station um, and get a munitions pack. Uh, as you can see, I've got Dead Silence as a perk as well. My field upgrade, sorry, so that, that's ready to go. Um, I've got my heartbeat sensor, um, which is very, very important, I think. Um, now, I know lots of people are playing Ghost, but loads and loads of people still like running overkill so that when they pick up their custom loadout drop it can have a primary and a second primary sniper and an assault rifle for example and so they don't bother they don't bother with uh, ghost and um, I, I have lost track of the times when the heartbeat center has gone blip and I've gone whoa and it stopped me and there's been a guy hiding in a bush right in front of me and I've kind of finished them off and in fact I, do, I think you may even see that in this gameplay as well so Let's talk about more about the, the circle tactics. We've talked about the guns, we've talked about practicing, we've talked about looting up in peace. So what am I doing now? Now this is a, is probably the simplest form of circle tactic you can do, which is all I'm doing is I'm just f being chased in by the red, so by the gas. So I'm coming in as late as I can with the idea that everybody else will have pushed in before me. Because generally not that many people hang around on the outside of the circle. People run towards buildings, they run towards gunfire, they run towards loot. Um, and people don't have the patience just to wait on the edge of the circle. So it tends to be safer. One of my tactics quite often is to move to the quiet side of the circle. So if that was the case in this game, what I would have done is I would have got a vehicle and I've gone all the way over to farmland you know, or over to where the castle was, um, and the quiet side of the circle would, you know, would be in the bottom right-hand corner. In this case, I've decided not to. I think, well, I've got plenty of cover. Let's just let's just try running in with the circle and kind of see how it goes. Now, that marker I put down there, that was just to show me where the centre of the circle goes. I find it very easy to become um, uh, a little bit. Uh, I, I lose track of you know which direction I should be going in. So all I'm doing here is I'm just using that to think, right, I should be going roughly in that direction. And um, if I can hear the, the the hum of boxes, I'm checking them out because more money the better. So I hear some gunfire to my left. So again, just checking how far I've got to go. Generally in Warzone, you can always outrun the gas. You can't run, outrun it in the first circle sometimes. But in the later circles, you can always outrun the gas. So I'm using my heartbeat sensor just to see where where that chap is. Again, I'm not making any rash moves. I'm trying to stay hidden. Now, I'm just a little bit nervous here because I know he's up there somewhere. So, at some point, he's got to go. Now, I make the decision because I've got quite a way to go to the gas. I did make the decision to get ahead. And what I'm trying to do is just zigzag, zigzag here just to put cover between me and the person who may well be running behind me. Because it's all about getting that cover, get, reducing that line of sight. 
Um, actually, we um, talk again about loadouts. What a really cool tip I got from Ross the other day is that with your custom loadouts, it, you're under a lot of pressure sometimes when you go to a buy station to, and you buy the custom loadout, and then you go to the drop, and you've got to pick the right one from the drop. Little tip is for the first, make the top three loadouts in your um, custom loadouts the same so that no matter what it happens you'll always end up picking the same one so what happens here is I come over here and it's nice and quiet I've checked it with my um, heartbeat sensor and then I realize that I haven't got many uh, rockets so I think well I've got the money let's just quickly go back here let's get a munitions box There we go, and then I can re-pick up my dead silence as well. So now we've got, I think you end up with seven rockets there, one in the launcher, and they become very useful later on. Or I've got six overall, there we go, one on the RPG, and then five in the backup. So now all, all I'm doing is I'm just waiting just outside of the circle just to see if there's any latecomers who are trundling in. The tactic I'm using, this isn't you know, rocket science. Lots of people use this tactic just to come in very late the circle, just to surf the, the gas in. Because again, the, the idea behind this is that you don't have anybody behind you in the gas. In Warzone especially, because the gas is so deadly, um, if they're not wearing a gas mask, you can hear them coughing and they'll die pretty quick. If they have got a gas mask, gas masks don't last very long. And if you've got a gas mask on, you can only fire from the hip as well. So the gas is coming in, so I'm just waiting. And I remember you know, seeing this, and you can probably hear me sighing, because every time the circle comes in, it's not being super kind to me. You know, that circle has moved quite a long way away. Now, looking at that map, though, imagine if I had gone to the bottom right of the corner of the map to where Castle was. I would have had a quite a good run in, a quite a good quiet run in. However, the disadvantage would have been, and you'll know this if you've been down there, that area of the map is very open. You know, so, you know, it's Sniper City. Somebody can, you know, see you coming and one shot you with the HDR with a with the bullet to the head. I can hear the suppressed gunfire and remember if someone's got a suppressed weapon they won't be appearing on the minimap so you need to rely on your, your hearing. This is why wearing headphones is so important and having the headphones turned up and uh, again my heartbeat sensor but even then again with the heartbeat sensor you have to remember that people who understand will be running ghost. Um, now I heard somebody just run past me then so I've just double back just to see where they are again what happens is one when you have to start running lots of people get very focused on running to the center of the circle you know, I've got to get to the circle and they forget about the flanks also you'll know that on console our field of view is very small it's probably it might just be about 90 degrees whereas if you watch PC players you'll see them when they have their field of view on you know they they can see basically from almost 180 degrees so it's very important that when you are moving around well I think just think again about running through that building because I think oh, I'm gonna get trapped by the ass you know just just be aware look to the flanks um, and really good players what they're doing often is they won't be running straight in like I'm in I am they'll be spiraling in from the slow moving portion of the circle which is where the new circle and the old circle are close together um, they'll be sparring in from the fast moving side where they're, they're furthest apart to the slow moving side so you know you need to be aware of who might be behind you and who might be on, on your flanks now what I'm doing here is I'm scanning around I'm stopping because anybody come behind me and I'm just looking for cover where can I go next again just to stay on that edge of the circle so look, scanning scanning right where can I go where can I go right there's this little building on the left this give a little bit of cover. Best to get inside. Quick check the heartbeat sensor. Tuck in behind this door, and then just listen. A lot of Warzone when you're playing this sort of strategy is just running and stopping and waiting, listening. So again, the circle hasn't been super kind to me. <laughs> I've got. I'm thinking. All oh, right, I've got to, got to get across the river. You know, there's the dry river like the LA River. Um, I mean, I've got a gas mask. Mask. I've got full armor. I've got my favourite MP7, I've got a rocket launcher, I've got two Molotovs and my heartbeat sensor. So, you know, I'm in a good position here. The only thing I'm really missing is... So we managed to blow up that guy's jeep. As you can see, he's running right to left. 
So now what I'm doing is, I've, he knows where I am, right? He knows where I am. Plus anybody else knows where I am. So my only option here, I've got to flank. I've got to change my position severely. Because he's going to be looking back towards the rockets. Now the gas is coming in, so I've got to deal with this quick. So I'm thinking, right, he's got to be underneath the bridge. He must be underneath the bridge. So let's black him with a rocket launcher. Uh, there he is, he's just on the corner. So black him that way. Using the rocket launcher as my distance weapon. How I don't hit... I think he must have shot it there. So there we go, we finish him off. He had a self-revive, that's why he didn't go down straight away. Quickly run over his stuff so I can pick it up. Pause for a second or two. To add my armour. Reload my RPG. You could argue that taking out that car wasn't the cleverest thing to do. But, you know, it is an awful, it's awful fun, isn't it? So, again, I'm just waiting. You know, I know I can outrun the gas. I know there's not much cover. So, here I'm thinking, where's the cover? Where's the cover? Where's the cover? Now, I see that guy running in front of me. He's gone up into those bushes. Again, just going slowly. I don't want to make too much noise. There he is. Alright. So, I can't quite see him. But I know he's in the bush. So, for a bit of fun... <laughs> Let's take his place in the bush. Let's take all his stuff. Let's rearmor up. See what he's got. Now this is where the circle has been kind to me. You know, it's probably sort of 20, 30 meters away, but it's along the line of these bushes, so I've got very, very good cover. Now to the left of me is the s is the far side of the circle. So the far side is where you've got the biggest distance between the old circle and the new circle. So this is where the gas will be moving the fastest. So people who are often on the, the fast side of the circle will be rotating towards where I am. So I just want to be checking out now. The gas is going to start coming in. So again, I'm just looking around. Check if that's the that's the dangerous side, right? Because that's where I could be rotating in. So I'm just watching that. And I'm looking around. Again, it's all part of this thing of not just look right. So this guy in front of me. So we've broken his armor. He's gone behind the rock. Try and get a bit of splash damage. Molotov him to get him to move. He has to move again. He's got. He chose a nice bit of cover here. So again, I drop down. Always be replacing your armor. Always be replacing your armor. So now I'm good to go again. Reload the RPG. Now, luckily, this guy happens to have a UAV, which I can see. I just have a little bit of trouble <laughs> trying to pick up the right thing. Well, I've got a fresh gas mask, so I think, right, how can I pick up this bloody UAV? Come on, give it to me. It keeps going to the wrong thing. So in the end, I pick it up. Right, so now, if I look on my mini-map, I know there's a guy over by the petrol station over on the right. So I know there's a guy there. So anybody else is either outside of my mini-map or they've got ghost. But I know there's a guy over there. So I'm going to come in slowly. I don't want to go that way because he'll probably hear me. I'm probably going to come up the left-hand side. But now I'm thinking, right, using the... Use the heartbeat sensor. Come in fairly slowly. And now it's all going to happen really fast now. So I'm just being very careful cause just in case he decides to rotate around the back. Again, just, just crouch walking, making as little noise as possible. It's all about sound at this point. Right, so there's a gunfight in front of me, so we're down to the last three. At this point, what I should have done is pop my dead silence, but I completely forget that I've got it. So, final circle, gas is going to disappear. So, I have to make a move. Now, I'm thinking to go left, to the left of the green tarpaulins, to loop round. Now, I just heard someone go through to my right. So there he is. So now there's it's so we are, so it's so it's uh, two left, one v one. So I can hear him firing to my right. I'm not sure if he's firing at me. So I go into the gas, jump over here, and then hit fire this guy who's on the ground, and we finish him off for the victory. Funnily enough, this is exactly the same place that I got a squad victory with um, Andy and Keith the other day as well. Yes, yeah, strange that. So there we go, a solo Warzone victory. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of how 
slowly <laughs> things happen when I'm doing that sort of strategy of jumping long, looting in peace, slowly coming in with the circle, staying on the edge of the circle, listening, listening out, and then uh, taking the advantage of basically creeping up behind people and getting the advantage on them. Anyway, if you've got any questions or comments, put them down below. If you enjoyed the video, hit like. If you want to see any more of the same, press subscribe, and I will see you again soon.